all doing? Okay, well, you know I did the video uh, of the uh, Fords and all that, uh, that, that uh, ploughing competition. There was a lot of interest, um, what with that and the previous video we did with the uh, Festival of the Plough, of those does, those articulated Fordsons. A um, lot of questions about them. So what I've done, I've gone and had a look at one a uh, bit more close up. We've looked at the engineering in them that was involved, how to, you know, they got them uh, to, to work and, and so on and so forth and the problems that they had. So, uh, yeah, enjoy. So this is obviously where it can swivel between the two units. That's so when right. they can go like that. And that's the weakest point is there, because they used to break in half there. Did they? Yeah. I suppose there's a lot of strain on them, isn't there? Yeah. And then, uh, so that's actually where, because I mean, a lot of, a lot of manufacturers with Arctics, they went with a system where, like with a load and shovel in it, where you've got top and bottom, maybe a middle uh, unit, and then a pin right through. Yeah. But yeah. these have actually gone on at a turntable, haven't yeah. they? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. all it is, it bolted uh, on the back of the gearbox housing. Yeah. There, look, so six bolts. On the back there. Oh, the back axle housing, I mean, not the gearbox. Yeah. So that's, obviously, then you'd have had, that's where, like, up the top, you'd had the top link and then all that on the normal one, yeah. wouldn't you? Yeah. They've just gone straight on the back of that. Sent a piece of back, sent a piece of box through there to strengthen for those steering rams. Look at the front. Yeah. Right. Yeah. So we can see here though, there's been a repair, there's a weld <laughs> there. And that's not uncommon on does at all, is it? No, it's a weak spot with them, yeah. It was that weak spot. Did it. I know they've done a good job, but it was cracked job. right away through. Yeah. But I've seen it on other other does as well, you know, that exactly the same point exactly. So I suppose it's where this narrows up, isn't it? See, See, those bars there are supposed to sit... These flat bars here, where those three bolts are, that yeah. goes right to the back end. That's supposed to take a lot of the strain. strain. Yeah, OK. Some have round bar, some have flat bar. It, I suppose it, vary, when, they, uh, when they were building, they just had whatever was to hand. That's right, yeah, that's right. Um, and as they, got, as they progressed, and that, that was cracked and they'd put a bit of strength in there. And, yeah. You know, the strength it as they went along. Yeah, I suppose because that would be a lot of it that they almost it was learning on on the job as you go. So when they had one that they'd sent out and thought well, that's all right, then I don't know, a few weeks down the line, the guy rings up says, "Oh, that tractor, I've got a split or a crack yeah. happened." The next one they're producing, they'll put another plate yeah, there. Right. And, you know, there's one or two. I've got a flat plate like that Are from they, about here through to them bolts there, flat. Yeah, double, well, that, that double size. But as I say, the, the layer to 5,000, the strength, it's totally different to that, the strength of the length and the strength of it all. Yeah. And those two, you keep those um, tightened together, because that's a round bar through there to stop it doing any end way. Right. And uh, there's two special spanners that look like a question mark. Yeah. They should be bolted on, but they're in the shed. Yeah. And, and tightened one against the other. Yeah. The last time we saw this one out, um, the ground was more favourable. The time before when we were up at the Festival of Plough, I mean, that was horrible, wasn't it? Uh, yeah. But what people don't realise is, like, down in Malden, where, like, does are around that area, Malden in Essex, it's just like trying to plough steel, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. Um, and, and it doesn't matter what you had. If you had um, a single furrow on a, on a big track, it's still hard work, yeah, it isn't is. it? Yeah, it is. So that's why well, they had to produce something that could, you know, get over the ground, isn't that's it? That's right, yeah. Here's right. that absolute the collection of various levers and yeah. as I yeah. say normally that would just be there's your gears, isn't it? But Yeah, it'd be just it'd be just for that gear and that gear. Yeah. Right, so this here then is this remote this way obviously there'd been the gear lever here before, wouldn't it? When that was just yes, a, that's right, here. Yeah. Well, that that spring keeps it to the left hand side for your low low gears. Yes. And then when you press the pedal that slave cylinder pushes this across. Yeah. And that one obviously does forward and back, or whichever way around it is. That pushes it forward, that one pushes it back. And when you see it here, it's quite simple, isn't it? Because as you say, there's your normal, like your gear lever, yeah. that way, yeah. that way, yeah. there and there. Yeah. It's just a case of actuating each of these to get it to do what you want to so do. Just as the actual shift pattern, to get this tractor and this one in gear, if you want to just say, let's say select first, well first off, as you're sat there, there's a shift across to the left and forward. But that one, don't touch anything, just pull that forward. 
And if you did that, that's because right. of where that spring unit we looked that's at, right, yeah. that's right, that then moves that. So yeah, you're basically replicating um, hand movement, so either left or right, front and rear, yeah. with foot movement for your left, right, and your forward rear movement, that that's on right. there is done off the spigot lever. That is it possible then, if you wanted to put one in forward and one in reverse? Yeah, easy. You could do that. You still know about it, like. <laughs> yeah, I bet. That's the steering pump for the back. Yeah. The ramp. Yeah. It's just a unit on the front there, off the off the crank. <coughs> you've got a diff lock for the front tractor as well as the back. You've not, you've you've only got brakes on the back tractor. Ah, right. So. So if you stop in a hurry, you're sliding because the door brakes on the front tractor. And like with the with the throttle. That's linked as well, is it? Yeah, one one lever and um, just linked with a cable. Right. And you can alter the, adjust the cable to get the revs, to vary the revs on the front tractor. Right, well obviously to take bigger equipment, um, you needed a bit bigger back end. Um, so you, it looks to me you've got conventional Fordson major lift arms well, but the strength are they're right. strengthened right yeah. as you yeah. know almost double the thickness aren't they yeah, on the, right, on the yeah. bottom end because i suppose the weights and the the, the, the pressures on them yeah, the strength of those look put yeah. that that on top that's of there and plate, double them up plate in there i don't know if you can see <clears throat> see that exactly in there that plate on yeah. top of there and the strength double strength of them yeah. same at this side yes with that. that's doubled isn't it with that yeah um, and then, and then they put the the one I drove when I was younger. Yeah. Just had the sister arms underneath here. Right. Yeah. And this one's got heavy duty. Yeah. For reversible. It, I mean, you got almost like a another sort of parallel linkage, isn't there? Yeah. On, on this whole with these yeah. with these rams on. Um, but there's two, there's three or four variations of of rams. Yeah. Under there, some has two under there, some has one. To strengthen all the back end, there's a plate here. Right. That's all strengthened. Look, coming up from that manufactured drawbar where the ram goes to. Yeah, yeah, you can see that. All and different. also that flat bar I was telling you about earlier yes. goes to the, this frame, carries on under there. Oh, that goes, that goes right through, that right through to the, the front. Take the pressure off. Yeah. Right. I mean, this um, this is a, a sort of better look at uh, well a normal super major, isn't it? So you can see that like, there's no. These are not beefed up, they're just cast, whereas yours have big old plates here and double right. yokes. Yeah. Um, back end, no bracing That's or nothing. Frame block. That's it, all goes forward. That's a different setup, look that. That's totally different, isn't it? It's locked in a <coughs> just a global horseshoe. Yeah, no these strengthens. are no big double plates on the bottom or anything there. And you have got all that parallel linkage as well. And obviously, you know, these, they're big old turnbuckles on yours. Um, so yeah. it just shows what they they beefed up, doesn't it? So, I mean, people collect these now, um, and they're sought after. We know that, because they did what well, they make about, let's say, around 300 in total, ish. didn't they, ish. That's some about went, it. Some went abroad. Yeah, yeah. Broke, broke into two tractors and an axle on them and sell, sell them in concert. This is it. I mean, I can remember in the, in the 80s, uh, when, you know, these were laying in, you know, the backs of sheds in the nettles even. That's right. Um, the tractor dealers, were buying them at farm sales, not as a collector's piece. Scrapping them, splitting them. Yeah, I mean the export market was up. So they would take this unit with obviously everything conventional on it, yeah. strip all this off, get an axle off maybe when I said the engine like, gone, whatever. It's down there like that one. That's right, put the axle under and they got a tractor. Yeah. And then this unit, they would just sell it as a gearbox and an engine. Yeah, that's right. And they would in spares and put them in a container. Um, but again, well, that's... Well, that's I don't. I wouldn't. I wouldn't know whether there's fifty. No. But we've had, no, twi no. We've had twenty-three in the field. There's a world record. Of of does. Yeah. Twenty-three. At um, East Midlands show about three years ago. We got. So there's there's more about than you yeah. you think. The but keep coming out of the woodwork as well. Yeah. yeah. Now yeah. this is the the yeah. thing. You know, there's people that have bought these and they're, they're driving them at shows and whatever. You actually used these. Yeah, when I was 17, I drew one, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you actually used them in anger at the time. We had three on the farm, on three farms. Yeah. And then uh, we've got a brand new one for the head driver, and then I was on a, a single 
headlamp no fail. Right. And I got promotion to adult, 17, and my dad was the manager at the local Ford agents, and I was made up that I was Ford through and through because of my dad. Yeah. And I suddenly got on the dirt. Wow. Uh, you know, up. they hadn't been superseded by much, because as we said before about the, the likes of Rovers County and, and Muir Hill coming out with um, single uh, unit tractors, four-wheel drive, and you know. Yeah. But, but at, this, at that time, when you got on it, they were still a... A viable bit of kit. Yeah, there was, yeah. You know. Yeah, there was. And also, when he sold, when these were past the worn out, he sold three doubles and bought four mil oils. 101 G range. So there's that 69. 68, 68, 69. 69, yeah. I didn't last long after that. No? Because I'm not in the same league. Really? Me as an old boy, I like the dough and. Yeah. You know what I mean? Well, yeah. Like I say, it's been great seeing you and the other guys out this, this season. I mean, for me, it's been to film them and that. Yeah. Uh, I mean, I went to the Festival of Plough, not knowing what I was going to see, and to see all of them. I've never seen that many in a field. There was sort of five or six there at the time. It was just amazing. Um, so, yeah, I must just look forward to next season yeah, right, and yeah. see you all out again. Oh, you know? oh. And uh, like I said, I hope that's shown people a bit about what they were capable of and also the, how they were just put together, yeah, which I right, think yeah. is the, the amazing thing about it, how they were all just configured and, and designed. So, right, well, thank you very much, Barry. Yeah. Much appreciated. Yeah, thank you. Yeah. Well, there you are. I mean, that is just, uh, the, you know, for the time uh, when they were done, the 50s and 60s, the engineer involved was just, you know, incredible, really, uh, for what they had available to them back then. Um, but, you know, things progressed very quickly. Uh, innovation and, you know, so on and so forth pushed things forward. And then there were, you know, four-wheel drive tractors coming out from several other manufacturers, and they were getting into more compact units, and, you know, so there you are. But... Um, yeah, as I said, it's just so interesting to see see one up close. So I hope you all enjoyed that. Um, if you like that sort of old squip, like I say, please uh, follow the channel, you know, and you can do that by pressing the red subscribe button. doesn't cost anything, just press that and you'll get notifications then of when I'm putting up another video. Throughout the week, I'll be putting stuff up as well uh, on Snapchat and Instagram. And if you want to follow on there, it is uh, LordMutt4890. And so, you know, there'll be stuff coming up on there. Also, there'll be stuff being put up and often there'll be live feeds and that ever, whatever on, um, on Facebook. And that is Podge Muck uh, on Facebook there. So uh, you can follow and keep up, you know, with other stuff we do as well uh, when I'm out and about. But uh, like I say, welcome to all the new subscribers. It's really good with the channel how it's growing now. Um, and uh, you know, I've done a few live feeds. Did one uh, the other day, and that, and it's just you know phenomenal. I had lots of people on there asking questions, and that was really good. Like I say, we're doing a sticker giveaway, um, and I'm going to leave that for sort of one more week um, for people to basically all you've got to do uh, if you subscribe to the channel, you know, if you're following the channel, and you're on, you've got you know press the subscribe button, then I'll see your name uh, on there, you know, and I'll just put it into the. Uh, into the hat basically and then uh, when we press the the thing it'll just draw out the names of, of the winners and I'll let you know who they are um, so that's all you got to do just as I said press that red subscribe button and you're in for a chance and of winning one of our uh, channel stickers um, yeah so it's all good all right then cup of tea time I reckon so uh, like I said thank you all for watching hope you enjoyed it look after yourselves have a good week and uh, mind how you go